All right, everybody. We have got another super duper treat. Uh, it's just incredible time for both you and I. <laughs> It's time with Anya's Vivarelli. I love these moments. We're going to be talking about a very, very cool topic, as you can probably tell from the title. But we're talking about revision. But there's also a lot of other little nuggets that we're going to kind of bring into play here. But I wanted to kind of get the basics, if you will, if we can kind of get a little bit of an overview from Anya's and just say, what is revision? What does that mean? You know, why do we why do we need this? Why, why would we want to revise something? So Anya's, how you, first off, how are you doing? Good. Fantabulous. Good. Fantabulous. I do. I do like revision because it unhooks you from creating unpleasant things today. Oh, okay. So that's the whole thing is to revise something. Now, just to make it clear, revision comes from Neville Goddard and it's a technique. He talks about the past is still alive. Okay. So the past, something's happened to you 10 years ago, 25 years ago. And what happens is the tentacles of that, and this happens with positive things too. I'm not just talking about negative things. Right, right. So if you if your parents had an amazing lotto win when you were a kid, then you will probably go on, having seen that amazing time around money, go on to create good experiences with money because the past is still alive in you in that particular area. But in terms of negative things, you can go back and revise. So say... We're going to use the example of uh, your, either your mother or your father cheated on the other one when you were young. So what happens is you as a child were in the house, you absorbed, obviously, before you knew, when you were really young, you didn't know what was going on, but you would have felt the distrust, the betrayal, the jealousy, the behind the, the curtain stuff, you would have absorbed that. And then when you got to a certain age, you would have worked out what was going on And then what happens is you then go into relationships yourself and you might have the, I don't trust women right? or um, all men are unfaithful or, you know, those kind of absolute beliefs, which then you go into relationship and then you create infidelity, whether you're a man or woman, you create infidelity in your relationship, whether you're gay or straight, irrelevant, it still applies in in that situation that you're going through you tend to attract exactly what you're what you're used to it's almost like that was your norm that was your your ground zero if you will and because of that you keep manifesting people that are happy to fulfill that role for you yeah and so yeah this revisioning process is an amazing technique where you know i think as goddard calls it right he calls it what the pruning shears right is that correct Pruning shears of revision, yeah. Pruning shears of revision, so yeah. fancy. So you're actually cutting off and pruning a tree, and what you're doing with yourself is you're cutting off and pruning the thoughts and the beliefs that you have about that event. So if you say, "Go, okay, I've been in three relationships. Every single time either I've cheated or someone else has cheated. That was my norm. Right. We obviously know that's not normal. It's right. not healthy. Well, it, yeah. it destroys people's yeah. lives. It doesn't work well for long-term relationships. No. Like that's heavily documented pretty much everywhere. <laughs> exactly. <Nah. laughs> so therefore, you go, okay, I'm going to go back in time. I'm going to remember. You don't have to remember every single incident, but you might remember a time where you came home and you came home from school sick and your dad was actually home. He was supposed to be at work and he's actually got trying to put his clothes on while you're walking through the door Um, or your mother did that. And then you're thinking, what the hell's going on? So you have this horrible emotional reaction. You can see your dad's guilt and his shame and him trying to push you into your bedroom or whatever. So you go back to that event and you revise it how you wanted it to be, which you came home. Your dad might have been home from work that day, but he was in the kitchen reading the newspaper, having a cup of coffee, and you just had a nice conversation with him. And then you went into your room and you laid down for the afternoon and you read comic books or whatever. So you revise it. And what you do with revision is you go over that scene, you're pasting over the top of that horrible scene, the scene that you wanted. So that's how you actually revise it. 
Okay, that makes a lot of what? sense. Now, I would I would yeah. also assume easily uh, easy way to find at least in this particular example if that's something that you can possibly relate to in your life. Obviously, the easy way you remember when that happened is it was that time you came home from school and there was like porno music playing in the house and you didn't know why and it was like bow, chicka, bow, wow, right and that's when you walked in on this horrible thing that maybe changed your life i don't know i'm just yeah. i'm just assuming that's how you would find that right because that sounds so awesome like that's the thing to walk in on you might yeah you might revise by having a new soundtrack when you walk <laughs> there you go right you could definitely spice that up a notch Spend a couple bucks. Come on, buy buy a buy the rights to a couple songs. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's okay. It. So this is a great way to kind of alter that obvious uh, emotional uh, scar, if you will, that left with us. Yeah. No matter what it was, like you said, the horrible something thing that I just made fun of, which makes yeah. me a very wicked man. But it could have been something else, right? Obviously, or like it could have been you. Someone cheated on you in a relationship, or. You know, there, maybe there was this issue where people always left when you needed them, and that was just something that happened yeah. in your life, right? And so you keep having these issues where maybe you date people that are always traveling for work or whatever the case is, yeah. right? and you never get to spend time with them, and you don't like yeah. that. These are ways yeah. that you can go back and find that that original cause of this. And if you're yeah. already in a relationship, for that matter, and and, and uh, this would be, I think, fun to talk about too, uh, if I'm correct, I hopefully... Um, if I go back and revise that moment, and I'm in a relationship now, or maybe my husband travels uh, a great deal, and uh, I'd like him to be home more, and I revise that uh, that moment when I was younger, where my dad would always leave every time I had a softball game, or every time I had a play, or every time I had my prom where I was dressed up and he had to be away, right? Like, if I can revise that, does that basically almost help create the scenario in my life where my husband never... Uh, or suddenly gets a change in his job where he doesn't have to travel as much. Maybe yes. it's way, way less. Maybe they can do stuff over Skype like a lot of people nowadays. Exactly. And that's what happens is you've deactivated the emotional place of, which is the belief, my dad's never around when something important happens for me. That's the belief that's active is people that mean something to me are never around. Problem active within you, you revise, it re Inst it like it wipes out the old thing and then it puts in what ought to have been there in the first place and then what happens is then the you're here in the present you cut the tentacles from the past and then you create new tentacles to the future with these tentacles that's such a fun word because if it's said just barely wrong it's uh it's horrible <laughs> changing things but these tentacles you speak of um when when I revise one of these situations, and I guess to go back to the example of my dad always left whenever I had something significant to happen, right? And I revise that, and I pruning shears and all that. And then, how like in that scenario, do I know it kind of has worked? Like when it's finally changed, do I keep revising it? Like do I have to revise it multiple times if it hasn't changed, or do you give it a couple weeks or? Like you That's got, yeah. Like, what's the proper dosage of revision? Well, I look. I had a I had a good one change. My and I'll use my family as an example because this is obviously my experience and it, I know it worked. I come from a family where a lot of people were creative. My dad was a sculptor. Um, he was great with his hands, with building. My mum was great with sewing. She was great with um, cooking. So. I grew up in a family where never, no one ever said, what do you want to do that for? Right. Like if you wanted to go and, um, you know, slide down a mountain in a red suit, no one would go, well, why would you want to do that? No Who one ever doesn't want to do that. That's stupid. Of course you want to do that. <laughs> you got to give a better example. But anyway, okay, whatever. <laughs> Obviously. The thing is the family was extremely creative, which was wonderful, but we had the family belief creative people don't make money. Uh -oh. So I spent years trying all these creative projects and everybody thought, oh, wow, look, and yes, she's doing this, she's doing that. But I never made any money right. <laughs> because I was still dragging my family belief. My father never made much money. My mother never made much money. Um, I wouldn't say we grew up poor, but we certainly didn't grow up with enough. Right, right. So there was always this struggle 
while people and my dad built boats and then he had to sell it because he didn't have enough money. So it was always this creative loss of the thing he'd created. Someone else got to benefit from it. So I thought, okay, I need to go back and revise this thing that right. causes me so much lack of money. So I went back and I thought, okay, what can I remember about people not making money or some situation? And I distinctly remember my father spending two years in the garage, which he'd extended out on both ends to build this boat with teak decks. And he, like he was an, um, he was a perfection, creative perfectionist. Wow. Then we were living in Canada at the time. And then I remember because of infidelity, my mum and dad decided to move to Australia to get away from the stuff that they were doing that was harming the whole family. And the thing is, I've got to remember too, my parents left Australia in their early 30s because my mum had me at 18. Wow, okay. So it was like I saw them as adults, right. but they were actually only just barely yes. adults, right. really. Yeah. So my dad had to sell his pride and joy that he'd spent two years working on and not only not making any money on it, he sold it for not very much. Oh, man. But also... He that's like had selling your soul. I mean, that's well, it was. Yeah. And, and the thing was, I know it was extremely painful for him because he wouldn't even be there the day they came to pick it up. Yeah, I, yeah, he just couldn't deal with it. Yeah. So, I remember thinking, Oh my god, you pour your heart and soul into something, and then not only do you not get to benefit from it, but then someone else gets the benefit of your <laughs> unbelievable, work. yeah. So I remember that situation being incredibly traumatic for the, for, but it was all unsaid, of course. Right, right, right. No one spoke of it. Yeah, it's just that undercurrent, but everyone was aware. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. my thing was creativity causes incredible loss and causes no money and other people benefiting from it. So I had to revise that particular incident, even though it wasn't even my incident. Right. It was one I witnessed and I saw the whole family collapse and, you know, with the infidelity and were, the lack of money, they were dovetailed together. Were you, so, were you there at the time? Were you living with them? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah you, I was you totally experienced it then, right? I mean, you were living in the middle of that. Yeah, yeah I was. Totally I remember the boat being there and then the boat yeah. going. So money and creative money and creative people don't make money. And people have to work hard for money. It was two beliefs. People right. have to work hard for money and creative people don't make money. So I went through my 30s, 20s and 30s, working like a dog, destroying my health and never, ever having enough and going backwards, going into debt. So I had to revise that and do the pruning shears a revision, go back and see my dad keeping his boat, that we stayed together as a family in Canada and revising that so it was emotionally what everybody wanted. Right. So once I did that and then I identified what my two beliefs were and then flipping the beliefs as well into creative people do make money and money comes to me easily and effortlessly, right. then and you were saying the, why I'm bringing this up no, is yeah, your exactly. question about yeah. how many times do you have to do it it's like you only know the answer to that once your external world starts to change. Got you. So I don't actually remember how many times I did it. But it's, a, it's a repetition until the result yeah. is experienced, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay. So now, you know, I mean, when I was in Australia and I was trying to set up a dance show and I was moving around to schools and then I worked for Walt Disney, wow. painting the cartoons, and then I was, you know, doing – all these amazingly fun, creative jobs. Um, but I couldn't get my financial act together. Right. It never, it, the dots never worked. And then I ended up $36,000 in debt because I, I hadn't revised it. I hadn't dealt with the beliefs and I hadn't changed my state around money. Right. So that's just an example of this is what it was. This is how it affected my life. And this is what I did to change it. So it's kind of three parts. And then so the, when the revision process happens, you obviously are looking at the scene. Uh, you remember it, if you will, for a second uh, for how it was. And then you revise it by basically recreating it to how you 
think it should have been or how you would like it to have been. So yes. it didn't create this sort of um, drama that it might have created in your life. Yeah. Or, or oh, well, it created an emotionally yeah. bad experience some around bad creative things, around loss of creative things, around other people. The, the big thing was other people benefiting from it. That, yeah. And I know a lot of creative people have that. Oh, yeah. I'm Be cool creative. they are. That's, that's what we're there for. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll work on that revision uh, coming up. Yeah. Well, there's always something to revise, isn't there? Well, but it it's is, that- and it's just like that thing you get used to being helpful, you know. And uh, yeah, you fall into that trap sometimes, and uh, you can't you can't necessarily blame anybody for taking advantage of what's being offered to them, right? So, but yeah, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. So, I guess I mean, is there? How does revision? I guess I'm gonna we're gonna dovetail this at this point because I'm curious. Um, uh, how does rubbing out? And revision, like, are, do they tie together in any way, shape, or form? Are they kind of different? Like, what, what do you think? What, where, where's your mind on that? They do. With rubbing out, is you're actually removing something from a scene. So, um, okay, it's so like trying to get something to go. No, okay, so yeah. if it maybe was that that horrible scene that I was being a jerk hole and making fun of, it could have been more like, okay, I want to <laughs> remove remembering that like that that memory yeah. alone is like get rid of that it's fine i don't really care that my dad did what he did the fact that i came home when i did and that horrible music was playing that yeah. obviously was a problem okay okay uh, so that's where you rub it out so you don't replace it in that case how does that work then well rubbing out i i've personally used it as like a cartoon i got a white piece of paper and drew four squares so like a cartoon right. four scenes and then I drew in the example that, that I've used it for that I can remember is I had a coworker that was constantly at me and literally barking at me nonstop while I was trying to work. And I was up a ladder and I had lamps and I was like on very unstable ground, literally. So I drew, I thought, okay, this isn't working between me and her. I was beyond angry. I was like hostile by this point because it had gone on for months and I didn't understand about everyone as you pushed out then. I did understand about rubbing out, but I didn't understand that she was me pushed out. So I drew in the cartoon a ladder, me up the ladder. I drew this all in pencil. I drew me, curly dark hair, her down the bottom, and I drew two thought bubbles, her saying, you need to do this, and I said, um, well, I won't. <laughs> I was wondering what F word you used. F E B B off. <laughs> nice. And then I drew the next one. I drew me up the ladder. I drew her turning her back to me. So she was actually about to walk away. In the third one, I drew me coming down the ladder. I was halfway down. And then I could just see the back of her head and one of her heels. And in the fourth one, there was me at the bottom of the ladder. She was gone. Okay, so I literally just rubbed her out of the scene and then it would make me laugh because it was so stupid when it was a cartoon that it was funny. So it, it took all the ag- aggressiveness out of it. So I drew this thing probably, I don't know, three times and I got to work one day and she'd been fired and I thought, oh, my God. And she, I didn't see her for six months. Then she asked for her job back and then she came back and she reappeared in another store because this company owned like I think 20 stores. So okay. she reappeared as the manager in another store. Anyway, I had done the rubbing out so successfully that when we saw each other, all the aggression, all the angst, all the bad stuff was gone. Nice. And she walked up to me and she hugged me and she said, and yes, how are you? Wow. And it, the whole relationship had changed. So it was like I had successfully rubbed her out, but what had happened was it had dissolved the emotional stuff between us right. as well with the humor of it. Now, when you were drawing these cartoons, were you literally drawing them from this yeah. like intentional, I am rubbing her out like standpoint? Yeah. Or, was, yeah. Okay. It was, now, is that a Goddard thing too, or is that? Um, 
I think rubbing out's Neville. I'm not sure actually, I, Dan. Yeah, you're where I've heard it from. So I've never, I don't, didn't really. Yeah, I can't be 100% sure. Let's put it this way. I've heard it from comments that people have yeah. said, Anya's was talking about rubbing out. And then I watched your yeah. video and then I'm like, oh, okay. That's what that is. Yeah, yeah <laughs> rubbing out. So that was, that was how I learned about it. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, is that, is revision kind of like I remember when? Because to me, those two sort of sound similar as well. Like, uh, the to me, I, like I just recently did a video on it. I remember when seems kind of like you, you take the opposite of what you'd like to experience and sort of like, I remember when I was poor. Like, I, I wish to have more money in my life. And you're like, I remember when I was poor. And then like yeah. what I was describing as the black belt version of it, which I think you taught me as well, was the being from the where I have the money around me and I see the money around me. And then more or yeah. less at that point, say, I remember when I was poor, which is even like to me is the next level of, of like awesome way to do it. Yeah, that seems kind of similar to the revision concept because you're almost. Well, I guess you're looking forward, though, not backwards. I guess that's the difference. I don't know. What you're doing is. I remember when is about going, I'm going to hop out of this state of poverty in your example into the state of wealth. So you are presupposing that you're over here feeling wealthy, looking back at yourself being poor. So you're unhooking yourself from the feeling state. Yeah, of- that's, that's what I thought was so powerful about it. Exactly. Yeah. Is that it, it's like a, it's like I was joking about, it's like a way to back into what you want because the doubts really are. Yeah able to be dealt with a lot easier because the way you're doing it, you're almost doing it backwards in my mind. And it, it's, yeah. kinda, it's kind of a cool way to, to do it. It's interesting. Mm. And I, I get well, it. Uh, your <laughs> question about our revision. And I remember when the same, no, because yeah. revision is going back into the past right. to clean up the present. Whereas I remember when is you projecting yourself into the future and then looking back at yourself in the present. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some really powerful techniques to kind of try to go back and yeah. make changes, certainly revision and rubbing out at least. Um, and mm. are there other ones that you know of or are aware of that talk about sometimes, or is those, are those kind of the general keys to where I've got some sort of situation in the past that I'm not happy with, uh, I don't necessarily want to rub it out per se, because maybe there was something of value in it. Um, revision probably would be a good place in that case that I'm painting right now, but is there potentially any other techniques you have where you can sort of alter the way the past has affected us today? Cause to me, I, I, I would assume the major reason we do this is obviously to make patterns stop happening in our lives. So we don't keep having experiences today that we don't desire. Right. So it's a way of like, why do I keep doing it? I keep noticing X, Y, and Z keeps happening over and over and over. Why yeah. is that? And then you're like, oh, crap, this thing happened when I was younger. And oh, my gosh. So, you know, I I, mm. I see the value of that, too. Uh, you know, But yeah, so I just I'm just wondering if there's I've talked about astral letters. That's one thing I've mentioned. And, and I can certainly put leave a comment in the video as far as the, the or the comments uh, in the video. But uh, that I did. But and that's essentially kind of creating a forgiveness scenario. You forgive yourself for any sort of wrongs you might have done to somebody else, uh, or yeah. you potentially forgive them if that's necessary in your mind too. So either way, it's a way to kind of revise a past experience. But I'm just wondering if you can think of any others off the top of your head. Um, no, nothing comes to mind. I mean, it's these techniques. I think Neville is so wonderful for techniques as in, techniques that aren't present present day ones you know yeah, like right. the, the, the LOA people of today talk about rampages of appreciation using that as a technique to get your vibe up or gratitude or scripting but those are all locked into the present right and those are forward looking as well too which I yeah. agree with but yeah and again I like I've said many many times I still and it's only because I've said it so many times I just feel like it's very important that I, I throw this out there I generally, as a rule, recommend looking forward. If you'd like something to happen in your life, then think about and imagine something happening in your life. But I can appreciate that there are times where it 
it would just make things easier if we could help kind of make a small little tweak to something that seems to be rearing its ugly head over and yeah. over. And uh, yeah. I think these are beautiful techniques that, uh, that really, yeah. I give you credit for, well, for sure the rubbing out, like that's a, that always meant <laughs> something totally different to me, but, uh, uh, <laughs> there was usually a number in between those two words and that changed things. And if nobody gets that great for those of you that do, sorry, I don't, you're going to have to tell me. After really? We <laughs> well, so yeah, for guys rubbing one out is, um, how we take care of ourselves when oh, necessary. Okay. Well, that's a, see, that's a country difference. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's possibly other countries that use that. I think it might be the fact that you're a female and you don't necessarily think like that. No, I no, I think it's the, you know, because Australia's got different. Um, oh, yeah, you guys don't say, oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> If, when we're off camera, <laughs> I want to I want to hear that because <laughs> I could always appreciate other disturbing things to know. <laughs> but I, I do so think. So unlike you, Dan. Oh no, I know, right? I'm so such a. You. <laughs> it's nothing. I'm just not even a. Yeah, no, I'm such a interesting. I'm I, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm putting my best foot forward because that's always a good idea. Yes, we try. We oh, yeah, try. sure do. But we're humans, like please, please. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So I, I think we nailed this one down pretty good, I, uh, unless you can think of anything else. But I, I, I think we really covered some solid practices. I think we asked a lot of good questions, too. And that was my hope was obviously to try to cover this so people out mm. in the world be like, oh, OK, that's what she means. Or, oh, I get mm. it now. I understand it better. And I think mm. with knowledge, of course, comes power. And that gives us that ability to make changes. Yeah. Can I say with the revision, right? Yeah. They, because you can use revision obviously for other people, which is what Neville did a lot. When he'd stand on the phone, he'd hear some bad news. They would hang up and then he would stand there, close his eyes, and he would hear in imagination them saying that whatever that was that was a problem had been solved. So he would revise for other people all the time. And, um, he said he had one example where a guy rang him and he was a pianist and he had actually insured this piano and he had sent it off somewhere to be repaired or something and the truck disappeared. Oh. And so the guy rings Neville and says, I don't have enough money to buy another piano. The piano's disappeared. The truck's disappeared. The guy's disappeared with everybody's stuff. My piano's in there. I'm really distressed. And Neville thought, okay, the guy hangs up. And Neville stands there, closes his eyes, and he says to himself, I'm like he heard the guy play the piano. So he's hearing him play on the phone this particular piece of music. So that implied that the guy had got the piano back. Nice. So he, he hears the guy play the piece of, piece of music. He hears the guy play the piece of music. Then he's satisfied that he heard it in imagination. Imagination creates reality. He hangs up the phone, and then not long after, the guy says they've recovered the um, the piano and that he's back on deck. So he revised that loss of the item for this other person. So you can use it in lots of situations. I, you know, I, I revised my mum being well when she got hit by a car on the footpath. Someone ran over her and she was in hospital. So I would go to bed every night and revise her back in her normal physical state so it's using revision not just for the things that bug you and are keeping you stuck but for those people that you love and then obviously in like the case of my mum being hit by a car I was scared she was going to die so I was revising so that I would avoid my own emotional distress in that case so you can use it for anything, someone losing their job, someone gaining a lot of weight, you remember them how they used to be thin, like whatever it is, you can apply it to so many different things in relation to other people that are important to you. What about if you, and I guess this is a way I think a lot of people would probably try to use it. What if you made a mistake towards someone? Like say you were yep. horrible to someone and that's maybe yep. why there's a breakup situation going on. Do you? You use it for yeah. that same concept as, as part of that healing process, essentially. So yeah. they'll basically reapproach you. For sure. Yeah. Cause you could have said something and then just gone, Oh my God, that just created such a big fight. And now we don't talk to each other or whatever you go back 
And before it went pear-shaped, you go, okay, I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to say, look, I really love you and I know that, you know, we have a great relationship and that things are getting better and better between us and then you right. hold hands and you go and watch a movie or whatever it is. Right, right. So you just paste over the top and you prune off. That's where the pruning thing comes in. You prune off all the bits that didn't work. Okay, okay. So it's like you're snapping all the little branches that were totally destroyed that event and created the argument or whatever. So that's how you do it. And then you focus fully on revising what didn't work with how you wanted it to be because you're putting over the top how it ought to have been in your mind. Right. How it would have been a good feeling place result. Now, one key question, I think this, this is probably, and I'm, there has to be an answer. We'll see. I'm, I'm very curious. But there's got to be in all the questions that you've received on this over the, the times, the years, the over, you know, however long. Have there ever been some generalization, some times, if you will, where people shouldn't be using it, probably better not to, better to focus forward? Or for the most part, is it kind of just like however you feel? Like, yeah, if something's bothering you in the past, screw it, go for it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I have heard people um, revising it that someone goes and has a car accident and stuff like that. You, or like so that, wishing like, negative on someone? Yeah, like a oh. third party. Like, say you you you've got a specific person right. who you love, and then a third party's come in, and you've got all this revenge going on. Oh man! So it's been used in a very dark way. Oh where yeah, that'd they, be horrible. That would have yeah, horrible so, implications on someone. Oh, yeah. Lord. Oh lord. So yeah, okay. and that stuff often boomerangs back to the person. Oh, big time, big time, huge. And they, like they say, it comes back tenfold. By the way, FYI, yeah. for anybody that's crazy enough to try that. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's uh, never never. So it can be idea. used in a bad way. So I'm glad you. Yeah. Yes. That question well, because, yeah, I'm glad that was your answer, basically, too, because I wasn't even thinking necessarily in that direction. But my goodness, that's very yeah. true. And as I've said before, and I think in the re uh, the video I did not too long ago, but I remember when is, again, when you get these techniques, and especially I remember when in my mind, and Anya, you probably will agree, but it's a very powerful way to manifest because of that doubt scenario. It is an extremely powerful way to kind of try to help give you some extra oomph towards your uh, manifestation and if you use that technique in a in a negative way you actually yeah. can you reflect that back on yourself very quickly yeah. and you, do. you don't want that kind of you just don't want to do that so yeah, yeah always fine. always use it for good always use it to try to improve the situation the best you can for everybody because if there's even a, a third party wish the best for them too but wish them to move on to other pastures right like they don't yeah. need to go to the other dimension. They can still exist yeah. on this planet with us. So yeah, exactly. There's there's ways yeah. to peacefully um, uh, create uh, avenues. And if you're not sure what one is, let let universe fill in those dots for you. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. maybe not a good idea to be trying to put that much, uh, you know, yeah. uh, painting that picture, if you will. Exactly. Well, Hopefully everyone's kind of gotten a big kick out of out of what we've done here, and uh, I think this was a good show as always. Always a good time hanging out with you, Anya. Uh, did you have anything parting that you wanted to say to our wonderful, lovely viewers? No, I think we've said everything tonight. I think I think this is a good topic because it's very practical and it gives you something to work with. I'm going to put down in the description a Neville pruning shears a revision for people that want to listen to it in a bit more depth and um yeah, i'll, I'll, put I'll the copy that from your comments too and add that to mine yeah and anything we've mentioned the, the rubbing out technique i remember when yeah. you know those kind of things that we've talked about now you've got videos oh. on all those so um i think i've only done i remember when i i, mean, I don't think i've really done anything on revision or rubbing out i think both of those is you know mm. been, in my mind have been a lot of you and then um yeah, I remember when I recently did, and that's actually done pretty well. It's was, uh, it was been fun. That was a great – I really enjoyed doing that one. That was a fun show. Mm. So, cool. Well, I appreciate you getting together with me as always. Thank you so much. Yes. And Yay. I and we'll uh, obviously we'll put something together uh, once we once we tie things out here. We'll uh, we'll put together our next one. I look forward to it. Sounds good. Are you going to hang behind the scenes for a bit? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Beautiful. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Ciao.